Hello, Recapped Mystery here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, romance film, X plus Y. Watch out and take care. While strolling, Nathan describes how difficult it is for him to have non-mathematical talks with people, how he is reluctant to communicate his opinions, and how he believes he is different from others. A doctor tries to play with Nathan, 9, but he is uninterested Nathan prefers patterns over games. Nathan's family is informed by the doctor that he has autism. Nathan's father gives him a pep talk about loving him despite his differences. In doing so, he fails to notice a van approaching them, which runs them over and flips their automobile. Julie, Nathan's mother, comes towards them, but only Nathan wakes up after the accident. Nathan and Julie attend Nathan's father's funeral. Nathan is traumatized and even more withdrawn after his father's death, refusing to take his mother's hand and fleeing away from her. Julie enters Nathan's room and asks him what he is doing while he is calculating math in his notebook. She wants to assist him but he says she can't since she's not smart enough. Recognizing that she cannot assist Nathan in developing his mathematical ability, Julie removes Nathan from elementary school and enrolls him at the local high school, where he befriends Mr. Humphreys, the math instructor, who also realizes Nathan's aptitude. As a result, the principal arranges for Nathan to get advanced coaching from Humphreys. While Nathan and his math teacher are sitting in the corridor, Nathan inquires as to why he is unable to walk correctly. He has multiple sclerosis and asks Nathan honestly why he is so strange. Nathan claims to have exceptional abilities since his father told him so. As the first lesson, they cover probability. Nathan inquires about the maths Olympiad, but Humphreys instructs him to concentrate on the task, and Nathan soon realizes that the equation is a coin toss. When Nathan gets home, he reads a book about the International Mathematics Olympiad and discovers that it is highly regarded by high school pupils. Nathan's thoughts is continuously preoccupied with the Olympics. Julie toasts bread for Nathan, cuts it into triangles, and places it on Nathan's plate before inviting him to breakfast. She helps him in any way she can in this fashion. Nathan is now 15 years old. Julie sends him to the exam and tells him it's fine if he doesn't make the team but making the UK Olympiad team is everything to him. Humphreys hands the questionnaire to Nathan. He assures him that he is a genius and that there should be no problem. Nathan then begins to answer the questions, albeit with a few glitches along the way. The results will be made public in a week. The teacher assures Nathan that even if he does not make the squad, he will do great things in the future. Julie places an order for her son. She anxiously tries to explain that she wants seven prawn balls for her kid and that they must be a prime number, but the cashier dismisses her. When Nathan discovers that the prawn balls have been mixed with fries, he becomes enraged and informs her that everything she is doing is wrong. This drives her to lash out at Nathan, causing him to shut down. Nathan and his father are enjoying dinner in the past. Nathan's father assures him he's fine the way he is, that he loves him completely, and that they even had an inside joke about ketchup. Humphreys approaches Nathan with the news. Humphreys reads the letter aloud to Nathan, informing him that he has been chosen for the UK math team and that the Olympiad would be placed in Taiwan. Nathan is pleased with the news, as are Julie and Humphreys, but he does not express it. Humphreys admits to Julie that he has been sacked from the school, but he still wants to educate her son. Nathan observes them from his room and inadvertently loses his telescope prompting Humphreys to leave. Concerned about Nathan's reaction, his mother tries to explain herself to him. She claims she is lonely and appreciates having someone to chat to. In their old wreck of an automobile, she copes with her circumstances. Nathan's father and dad used to play with Bengal lights and write prime numbers in the air. Meanwhile, Julie requests that Nathan change the water for his fish. She envies how nicely they get along. Nathan becomes fascinated by the fish and floods the floor. Julie tries to stop the water but falls, causing Nathan to flee, and she sobs because her kid is so cold to her, the same as it is now. Nathan receives a set of compasses from Humphreys. They accompany him to the airport, and Nathan learns Chinese on the way. Nathan is presented to his guardian on this journey, Richard, at the station, and after they say their goodbyes, he is introduced to his squad. Nathan becomes acquainted with Isaac, the arrogant type 
and other chatty members. Nathan and 15 other teens then leave for maths camp. Despite the fact that there are 16 on the bus, only 6 are chosen for the maths olympiad. Richard motivates everyone to do their best and win against the Chinese kids who have dominated the maths olympiad in recent years by giving a motivational speech. A girl approaches Nathan during the trip to Taiwan. She tells him briefly that he isn't the odd one out here, nor is he the finest mathematician he's just ordinary, which he appreciates. The teenagers arrive at maths camp, where they will spend the next two weeks. Because the Taiwanese youths are in the lower levels, the Chinese youths are the main competition for the UK squad. Richard is well familiar with their guardian when they attend the Chinese classroom. The guardians decide to link up UK and Chinese students so they can learn from one another. Nathan has been matched with a girl named Zhang. He is hesitant to introduce himself because of his impairment. The UK team and the Chinese team meet for dinner in the evening. Zhang demonstrates how to handle chopsticks. Later, they walk back to camp together, awkwardly, until Zhang finally breaks the ice and asks him if he is okay. He responds to her in Chinese. And she is astounded that he learned it from a book. When they arrive at their room, which Nathan will share with Luke, another disabled youngster, they are both dissatisfied with the asymmetrical window. Nathan's mother calls after he has unpacked his things, but he decides to ignore her. Instead, he calls Humphreys and declares that no one is smarter than him. Humphreys reminds him that it's just 14 days away and that 14 is a positive integer, so think positively. Until Luke returns, Humphreys soothes Nathan down by asking him math questions. They don't say much to one another. During the lecture, Richard asks Nathan a question, but Nathan does not respond. Later, Richard tells Nathan that he is overcomplicating his answers and that he needs to move up if he wants to represent the United Kingdom in the Maths Olympiad. Julie invites Humphreys to her home to instruct her in maths while also alleviating her loneliness. She believes that if she knew maths, Nathan would reconsider her and begin chatting to her. Nathan notices the girl playing the piano from the plane. She teaches him simple harmonies and compares music to maths. Despite the fact that Nathan has never played the piano, he nails the melody. Julie and Humphreys are drinking wine and discussing Nathan. The two share an uneasy intimacy that they both crave. They collapse to the floor, and Humphreys informs her that he cannot go any farther due to his disease he is afraid to disappoint her. While Nathan and Zhang are going through the park, Nathan explains that he dislikes change but like this location because of the Chinese approach to numbers. Also, at the park, Nathan opens the food box to eat but it contains eight prawn balls, emphasizing that it is not a prime number. Zhang easily solves his dilemma by eating one prawn ball. Richard asks Nathan a question concerning a pattern of playing cards and invites him to the board. Zhang encourages him, and he eventually musters the bravery. Nathan correctly answers the question, and everyone applauds. He ultimately pushes himself beyond of his comfort zone and matures on a personal level. Humpers attends a meeting to discuss his issues. He likes Julie and wants to be with her, but he is scared that his health would decline as a result of his multiple sclerosis, and he will be unable to make her happy, only adding to her stress. Zhang shows Nathan the game she used to play as a child after maths camp. They have a tiny treat, and Nathan reveals his worries about the next exam. Zhang assures him that they will both pass, and that she will stay with Nathan during her cultural exchange. Nathan, like a turtle, is always in his shell. According to Zhang, they both have feelings for one another. The exam day arrives, and both the UK and Chinese teams sit in the same room. The six best scorers from each country are chosen to compete in the Olympiad. As the exam begins, Nathan feels nervous. All of the noises keep him from concentrating on the questions. Zhang visits Nathan after the exam, and he admits that he performed poorly. Richard announces the top five pupils' grades. Nathan and Luke competed for the final position, with Nathan winning by one point. The six Cambridge Maths Olympiad qualifiers will welcome the Chinese members at their homes. It's time for the British team to depart Taiwan. Richard compliments Nathan on his work, but he is concerned about Nathan's volatility and inconsistency. Nathan only needs to keep focused to win a gold medal. The teams from the United Kingdom and China have arrived in England. Zhang and Nathan are welcomed by Julie and Humphreys. The adults had put up Nathan's toy train to surprise him, but this irritates him. Nathan flees, 
and his mother consoles him from the other side of the door. Julie inquires about Zhang and discovers that Nathan likes her, but he is unsure what it implies. He probably enjoys Zhang as much as he likes maths, she says. Nathan allows Zhang to use his bed and the two remain in the same room. Zhang discovers that Nathan's father perished in an accident and expresses her sorrow since losing someone you care about is heartbreaking. To better grasp what Zhang is saying, he looks up the love equation. Julie, Nathan, and Zhang arrive at Cambridge University to compete in the Cambridge International Mathematical Olympiad. Despite Nathan's doubts, John clutches his hand as they ascend the stairwell to the dormitory. Richard shows the students around and tells them that this is the most prestigious place in the world to study maths, and he asks his staff not to disappoint him. The 59th International Mathematical Olympiad begins with the introduction of teams from around the world. Zhang is unable to sleep after the round of introductions, so she comes to Nathan's room, where he uncomfortably invites her to join him. Zhang tries to kiss Nathan unexpectedly, but Nathan jerks away. They kiss a few seconds later. This kiss is naive and infantile, but it is wonderful. Zhang's guardian, who is also her uncle, enters the room in the morning and discovers the two sleeping together. This enrages him, and he inquires as to whether or not they are in a relationship. When he chastises her for spending her time with boys rather than studying, she lashes out and rushes away. Zhang does not want to stay in Cambridge because she believes she does not deserve to be there. Nathan tells her to stay until the competition is over. Zhang admits to liking Nathan but decides to go anyhow. The day of the maths exam has arrived. While Nathan is traveling to the Olympiad, the girl from the airline approaches him and apologizes. She is to blame for the situation because she notified Zhang's uncle about him and Zhang. The maths exam is about to begin and everyone appears worried. Humphreys is one of the examiners and says he can offer Nathan the answers to some questions, which is obviously a joke. Richard says they can start the exam now. They've got four and a half hours. The sound of a pencil being sharpened or a knock on the table distracts Nathan as he begins to read the question, and even the most intense recollections flood before his eyes. Memories of his father, of the disaster, and of John in general. Nathan runs out of the exam room overwhelmed by his emotions. Humphreys closes the door behind him, keeping Richard from approaching Nathan. Humphreys apologizes to Julie for not stopping Nathan, but he believes he had a more important task to complete. Julie says it's alright, kisses Humphreys, and chases Nathan. She discovers him in a coffee house. He informs her that Zhang has admitted to him that she likes him. Nathan can't explain his feelings for Zhang. But he knows his brain functions differently when he's with her and his body feels warm. Julie explains what love is to her son so that he can better understand the notion of his feelings. Nathan speaks about his father for the first time, and it hurts him. Julie, like Nathan's father, shoves fries up her nose. This makes him emotional, and she is relieved that Nathan is now talking to her. Nathan and Julie jump in the car to catch up with Zhang. But this time Nathan sits in the front seat for the first time since his father's death, slowly coming to terms with his grief. Because Nathan is driving for the first time since his father's death, Nathan grabs his mother's hand and walks away with her. Nathan had never liked anything more than maths, but Zhang forced him to. The end. Please subscribe, to assist the channel, turn on notification and leave a like. Thank you for taking the time to watch. See you again soon.